I always use these little thread catchers at the beginning and end of each row and then I keep them all in a little collection on the wall. <laughs> it's pouring with rain, just exactly like Mark said it would. So I'm indoors and I'm making, I've made the backing to the quilt. I'm not a hundred percent happy with the choice but I had it and this is a kind of use what you have quilt. So that's what I'm doing, using what I've got. I It wasn't quite wide enough, so I've pieced... First of all, I made that run of flying geese there that I thought I might put in the middle. But actually I thought, no, that's too much like the front. So I made another run of flying geese using the background fabric as the goose fabric and just some of the other fabrics from the front. And I actually like that. I think that looks um, less... Uh, colourful and more in keeping with the backing. It makes me like the backing a little more. So I've also made the binding uh, of the quilt. I like a narrow binding so I've made that. I'll show you all about the binding when I'm putting the binding on. I'm going to clear this table off now. Isn't it interesting that at the end of making a quilt what you need is a nice big clear area to pin it out and, and quilt it. Uh, and it means you have to tidy everything away and put everything away. So that is what I am going to do. Norma has the favoured spot right there. And the rain she raineth. Here we are. Let's have a little look. These are those are the potatoes I, I put in yesterday into bed one. And it's windy and raining. And the only thing to do is to stay indoors. I'm ignoring the goose. We're not even going to talk about it. However, Sherry pointed out, and it had occurred to me as well, I put about the same time as it occurred to Sherry, that what am I making? A flying goose quilt. It's all a bit goosey round here at the moment. I do like that middle run better than that other one, don't you? Yes, I do. I'm going to clear the table off now, and then we are going to lay it out I always say we, don't I? It's only me here, you know, and you guys. I'm going to lay it out uh, with the wadding, the backing, the fronting, uh, and pin the whole thing. You've seen me do that with the stars quilt. So I won't go bonkers at showing you all about that. But then we'll get on with the quilting part of this, because I want to get this one finished now and start with the next one when the weather uh, allows. OK, I'll see you back here in a minute. I've just spent the longest time trying to work out how to put music over this little clip and failed miserably. So here's Norma purring instead. Pinny. I've laid the back out. Slight worry when you do something like uh, I've done on the back with a piece of flying goose, as in this case is that you're not going to get it square. It's going to be slightly off. I've measured and measured as carefully as I can. And do you know something? I'll just have to live with it if it's a tad out. The pinning, I'm pinning in every alternate pattern, and but I'm pinning every one, every single one around the edges, because I do want the edges to stay put and stay together. And I'm pinning in the, the big triangle, which means that then when I'm quilting, they won't get in the way because I think I've pretty much decided that I will quilt along those lines. When I quilt, I like to use, um, I use, sometimes use um, three or four strands of embroidery thread because I've got lots and lots and lots of colours of embroidery thread. And so I could choose very, very many colours and, and do that. Uh, but I also, I've got this stuff, uh, I like Aurifil thread. Um, if you're used to threads, this is 12, Aurifil 12, which is a thicker thread. Look at all the cool colours I've got. That'll really work, won't it? Yes, I like those. So I think I might quilt in the ditch with Aurifil 12. And you know something? As it's raining, I think I'm going to start today. All the pins are in, the things are all lovely and level. I've checked the back and it seems like it's really nice and flat. And I've got in this bowl here, I've got all the different colours of pinks I want to use, plus a little tiny bit of beeswax. 
which I'm going to use to run the thread through. And then I've got my quilting needles. I use these quilting needles. They're tiny, but they're very fine and they go through the um, bulk of the fabric, three layers really, really well. So I, I have the quilt laid out here. I've done the first row of stitching. Now this is quite a small quilt, relatively five foot square. It's not that big. If I was doing an enormous quilt, I would make sure that I quilted one direction like so, then turned it round and quilted the other direction the other way, especially if you're machine quilting, because to uh, to quilt all in the same direction causes a sort of bowing of the fabric so that the thing comes out of shape. With hand quilting and with a quilt this size, it's not really that vital that I do that. Uh, I could stitch every alternate row, then turn it round and stitch every alternate row the other way. I could do that. So I've just done the first row of stitching with this colour. You can't even see it because I'm stitching in the ditch. So it's actually stitched in here. So you can't see it. That's OK, though. You can kind of see it on the back. We'll have a look at the back at the end. So I've got some Netflix nonsense on the uh, computer over there. I'm going to choose the next bit of thread. Now, I like to cut the thread the whole length of the run. And I'm just going to move this down a bit, which is going to be interesting. There we go. I've moved everything down, including you. Yeah, so this the length of the run is only five foot, isn't it? And it's a bit long to start to sew with, but I'm careful. I take my time. There we go. So I'm going to cut that the whole length of the run so I don't have to do any joins in it at all. Cut that off, stick it back in there. But the um, Running it through the beeswax then just makes it less likely to tangle when I'm stitching with it. OK, so that's that. Oh, yeah. And what you haven't noticed is that just off camera there for the whole of that little chat there was Sadie sitting there washing herself, sitting on the quilt. Because, of course, I've laid this out especially for her, haven't I? Now, um, this, oh, I want to explain about this little thing. This little thing here, my mum made these by the hundred. <laughs> it's a milk bottle, plastic milk bottle lid from a big um, jug of, of milk that she used to save and save. And then it's just a uh, fabric with a bit of wadding inside and a little bit of elastic on here. And I use them uh, for putting my pin in, my needle in, sorry. I, I use them for putting my needle in, uh, in between rows. Because if I put it down on here, I'll never find it again. So it's, um, she made me loads of these. And she used to make them, she was a member of the Southport Quilting Guild. And they used to have little fundraisers. And she was always making things like that for them. I remember one time I was teaching um, a group of 12 women um, for a 10 week period. It was a fantastic project. And she made one for everybody. <laughs> she made everybody a, a pin cushion. Not my glasses for six. So Sadie's going to teach you how to. No, she's not. She's away. Don't eat the wax. sit over there because this is the bit I'm doing <laughs> this is the bit I'm doing Sadie <laughs> I am sometimes it gets caught on the pins I guess that's why some of you gals like 
basting spray. So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Because this is quite a short needle, I'm just putting it one stitch at a time. I go right through until I can feel the table, which is why I love this table so much, because it's uh, nothing bad can happen to it at all. I'm just going to stitch and stitch and stitch now until this whole thing is done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Another one of those uh, watching paint dry videos. So I shall spare you the tedium. I like doing it, but I'm not sure it's a spectator sport. So I'll get back to you when I've done all of it. We may call that part six. Thanks for watching. I'll see you when I'm going to do the binding on this one, uh, unless something else happens in the meantime.